Thank you. Um, I just wanted to address the no-bid contracts. Again, I don't know why all of a sudden we're talking about kick kickbacks um, when it deals with minority and women and service disabled veterans who, again, are just trying to get some type of equity, some time of some type of their economic uh, fair share. Um, I also want to say that for any type of emergency services, uh, my colleague had mentioned shelter emergency services having no bid. Um, it is known in instant statute that a government can allow competitive bidding, even programs like MWBE that requires um, gold uh, to be waived when it's an emergency situation. I also want to bring the fact that um, many of you know that there's a program called Corecraft where you have prisoners who are, um, you know, making these projects for basically almost a penny, uh, you know, for a, a cent or 10 cents. Um, these prisoners are not getting paid. These are contracts that can be procured by minority women business enterprise, but prisoners are being exploited and are getting paid for nothing. But no one is talking about that. I also want to say that in the recent affirmative action decision by the Supreme Court, uh, students for fair admission uh, versus uh, Harvard College and versus University of North Carolina, I do believe that the court had er erred in their ruling, saying that race-based affirmative action programs and college admission processes violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Um, but I do want to point out that Justice Roberts um, made room to say that in these type of cases, race-based programs, strict scrutiny requires that the use of race serve a compelling government interest, like the educational benefits that stem from diversity and be narrowly tailored to satisfy that interest. Here, in the state of New York, the Article 15A program has been a narrowly tailored program to address the disparities in government contracting against minorities, against women, against service disabled women. And we've had the, uh, the disparity study and the statistics, the analytical statistics, the quantifiable statistics to show and prove that racism, sexism, discrimination against service disabled ven veterans continue, continues to um, happen in our procurement process, which is why we have a 15, uh, an Article 15A program. MWBEs have been playing a slow catch up for decades and decades of being disproportionately stripped from our economic resources and our fair share of the piece of the pie. By lifting these discretionary buying thresholds, we are lifting a major barrier for equality by allowing our minority women-owned business services, as well as service-disabled veteran businesses, to thrive. Today, we have been debating not on billions of dollars, in most cases, not even on millions of dollars. We're debating on crumbs. Yes, crumbs. And Mr. Speaker, I just want to let you know that we're going to continue to fight for our lives, for equity, equality, for better lives, for better schooling, for better health care, affordable housing. And we should expect that whenever it's education and whenever it's economics, we're always going to be challenged in the courts because it's an opportunity for the vulnerable community to excel through education and economics opportunity. We're still fighting as black people for our 40 acres and a mule that we never got. We're still fighting for reparation money that we never got. Black people after hundreds and hundreds of years of slavery. I recently graduated from Brooklyn Law School. Never thought I would ever, ever go back to school. And I decided to go back to school because not only that, I have been a victim continuously of discrimination, having lost my child in a hospital who didn't want to serve me, but I have witnessed discrimination continuously throughout my life. 
And I felt that having a legal, legal education would allow me to also battle the fights in the courts. And as long as I live, I will continue to fight for equity and equality for people in the state of New York, for people in the United States, and for people in the world. So I'm asking my colleagues to please join me in passing this crucial bill for equity for all. Thank you.